Icebreaker is an exotic sniper rifle obtained randomly from the Sunrise Nightfall bounty from Zavala. It trivialized encounters in Year 1 and in Year 2, it was still the source of much frustration from PvP since it negated the special ammo changes. Players have been skeptical of its return, especially since multiple sources from Bungie have stated how difficult it is to design encounters around it. Now that it's back in Year 3, how does it shape up against the rest of the PvE encounters and the PvP meta? Let's go over the perks and find out. First is no backpack. This gun cannot be reloaded. Instead, it regenerates ammo over time. It takes 7 seconds for a round to regenerate and the gun can hold up to 6 rounds. If you spawn into anywhere, it will take 42 seconds for you to have a full magazine. Also, if you pace your shots properly and start with a full magazine, you can usually have a round regenerate while you are shooting, effectively giving you 7 total rounds before you have to start letting it regain ammo again. For muzzles, we have accurized ballistics, more range and impact, increased recoil. Field choke, more range and impact, increased recoil. And linear compensator, more predictable recoil, slight boost to range and impact, more recoil. I just go with linear compensator here, as it makes the recoil almost entirely vertical. No matter which muzzle you pick, you will have a hefty kick to each shot. So being able to predict that the shot will go vertical so you can compensate for that is preferential. This will make chain shooting a boss easier and you will be able to land follow-up shots more reliably as well in PvP. For perks, we have Mulligan. Missing a shot has a chance to return ammo directly to the magazine. This perk was buffed some time ago. It's actually a fantastic perk on this gun now since it procs so often, and time between rounds regenerating has been increased. Each shot feels like it matters a little bit more, so missing a round really stings. While Mulligan doesn't proc every time, it procs frequently enough that you can see some benefit from it. Next up for stat mod perks, we have Quick Draw. This weapon can be drawn unbelievably fast. Lightweight. When held, this weapon grants plus two character agility. And Snapshot. Aiming this weapon is incredibly fast. There is one and only one option here. Quick Draw. In year two, Icebreaker was public enemy number one for a very long time in Trials. So one of the things Bungie decided to do was nerf its equip speed to one. Seriously, it has an equip speed of 1. That makes using this gun in any reactionary manner damn near impossible. Quick Draw fixes that for the most part, plus it also increases the ADS speed more than Snapshot does. I'd only pick Snapshot if you are a Blade Dancer or a Warlock with Ophidian Aspects. The final perk is called Icebreaker. Icebreaker's victims spontaneously combust, dealing damage to others nearby. This basically gives every single kill you get Firefly, regardless of if you land a headshot or body shot for the kill. The only difference is the radius of the explosion. Firefly will damage enemies up to 5 meters away from what you killed, while Icebreaker will only damage things 3 meters away. It also has the same damage as Firefly, initially. You really aren't going to see this perk be useful in either PvP or PvE unless enemies are stacked right on top of each other. It was always fun using this gun in Crota's Inn because that first section had thralls upon thralls upon thralls, so one shot would typically kill all of them, plus crash your console. In PvP though, it will be extremely rare for this low radius firefly to actually damage someone. Most you can hope for is getting them low enough that a body shot will finish them off. So now that we know what the perks do, let's get into how this weapon performs in PvE. In year one, the PvE landscape was dominated by bullet sponge bosses and larger open arenas that lent themselves well to players just sitting back and shooting. So it's easy to see why Icebreaker was one of the best exotics. You didn't have to venture out for ammo and things would eventually die. Well, in year three, fights have changed. Hell, even in year two, most of the fights didn't really lend themselves to Icebreaker's passive utility. You have to move around in almost every single fight, so you're bound to pick up ammo for a normal sniper anyway. Boss fights in the raid generally have finite damage phases, but those damage phases are long enough that you would easily deplete Icebreaker's six rounds. Fights are also pretty mobile in the raid, so you have ample opportunities to pick up ammo for a normal sniper. Again... As far as I'm concerned, the prime reasons for Icebreaker being one of the most sought-after exotics in year one are gone. Sure, you do get into some encounters that favor passively sitting back like the Archon Priest or Valis, but even then I feel like there are much better options out there for a special weapon exotic. Black Spindle comes to mind. So if Icebreaker isn't breaking encounters, is it even worth using in PvE? Well, 
Yeah, I still find it an incredibly fun weapon to use. Regenerating ammo is a wonderful tool since it does still allow for some passive play, but it also forces you to use your heavy weapon more if you're trying to get more damage out of the encounter. Strike scoring and this weapon also go hand in hand. Sometimes you're out of special ammo and you can't continue getting rainbow medals. Well, if you use the icebreaker, you'll pretty much always have special ammo to expend for three quick kills. The almost completely vertical recoil from Linear Compensator I mentioned earlier is another thing I mark on the pros column. A lot of times snipers will have heavy diagonal recoil making rapid precision shots difficult. Since you know your reticle will jump straight up, you can just compensate by pulling down on the control stick and keep firing away. I think I'm more precise with this gun and its lower aim assist than some of the other higher aim assist options out there. This is somewhat due to the recoil, but the maxed out range bar is also coming into play here. Range does increase aim assist, but it also makes it so you can hit targets further out while still feeling the stickiness benefit from aim assist. That's kind of a layman's explanation, but it does explain why I reliably hit precision shots from further easier than I do on my normal sniper. The only real drawback I can find to this gun is that you can't pick up ammo, and that 7 seconds between rounds recharging just takes forever sometimes. Almost all of the current fights in the game have a lot of movement in them, and there aren't really any cheese spots that allow you to just sit back and pick away at bosses anymore. Since you're moving around, you are bound to pick up ammo. Since you have more ammo, you will be able to do more damage in scenarios where you have longer times to shoot. So while this was probably one of the top tier exotics in year one, I don't believe it still is in year three. So much has changed for the better. So Icebreaker is just a nice piece of nostalgia that you can wield at the proper light level now. Moving over to PvP, the nerfs stunned to Icebreaker during the Taken King are very, very apparent. First, the 7 seconds per round is a very long time in PvP. I would often spawn in and be ready to shoot someone, but then have to wait another second or two to fire. Ammo does not stay on you if you die, so every respawn you will have to wait 7 seconds to get potential use of your special. If you're able to stay alive for longer periods of time, then you won't really have a problem with the ammo recharging. The other thing that really hurt the gun was the equip speed nerf. While using Quick Draw does remedy this, it also means means you're pigeonholed into using that perk over the others. Normally, I say lightweight is kind of a pointless perk, but picking it on this weapon feels like it's actively detrimental to your well-being. PvP is so fast-paced now that you need a weapon that can respond quickly. I know it's a mark of a good player to predict when certain things will happen and swap weapons beforehand, but having that extra bit of room to commit to aiming rather than watching a weapon animation is a godsend in PvP. The other thing to be aware of is the aim assist. Since PvP is so fast paced, you don't have a lot of time to take with your shots. Having an aim assist around 50 or 60 is generally regarded as the baseline for a good PvP sniper, since it will drastically help your drag scopes, as well as just make the gun more consistent. Icebreaker has an aim assist of 40. Personally, I'm used to this since I've been using the vendor Event Horizon for quite a while, but for someone who isn't used to this lower aim assist, it will take a while getting used to the slower stickiness of the scope. The one thing I really like is the maxed range stat. Believe it or not, there are a lot of instances where you will miss shots because your target is just beyond the range of your gun. The max range on Icebreaker will be extremely beneficial for some of the longer sight lines in the game. So is Icebreaker worth using in PvP? From a competitive and a practical standpoint, no. What made it good in the past is no longer a factor, plus the nerfs that it received just hurt any upsides that it had in a competitive environment. However, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't use it if you enjoy the gun. I still don't have the gun yet, but a viewer was kind enough to let me use their account to get all of this footage and play around with the weapon. Even though I know I'm kind of hurting my loadout by using it, I still want to use it. It's fun. I enjoy making things explode. The sound of the gun firing is pleasing, the recoil is easy to control, and the ornaments look pretty stellar. All of that is a very personal choice though. I can't recommend that you use the gun for any serious PvP, but I can recommend it if you want to try something out that's different and truly exemplifies the exotic nature of exotics. I hope you found this information helpful. I need to give a huge shout out to CCCoon91 who allowed me to use his account for this review. You're awesome. Thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time.